fact is one day at a time.com comes on every week with minister chestnut live and in living color so be there every week because jesus is our rock Welcome to Life is One Day at a Time.com. I'm Minister Chestnut. Thank you for joining me again on another day of life and another day of love. The living is riches in glory. Praise God. I'm continually praying for you that you are blessed going and you are blessed coming, that you're the head and not the tail, you're above and not beneath. I'm praying that you're prospering in mind, body, and soul domestically, socially, and financially. I'm praying that you're rooted and grounded in his word and that you will continue in the faith. And as we continue in the book of Acts, the last time we were here, Paul was on his way to Damascus and the Lord met him in a bright light and told him what he must do and how much he must suffer. And there's a lot that he had to go through to preach and to teach and to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pick it up again when uh, he was about to, you know, he got his sight back, he got baptized and converted, and he's fellowshipping with the saints. Let's pick it up in, uh, in chapter 26. This is after they, they, the, they was trying to kill him, and they, they let him down the wall in the basket. And when Saul was come to Jer Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. He wanted to, you know, to meet with the other disciples, but hey, uh, he had a bad rep. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the disciples and, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And when he was with them, come, and he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. Now, after Barnabas brought him to the apostles, and you know to prove that hey he had been converted, then he stayed with the apostles. As they came in and out, going throughout Jerusalem, preaching the word of God. And he sp spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him. They couldn't handle the truth. Because Paul, formerly Saul of Tarsus, Hey, he knew his history. He knew his word. But the Grecians went about to, to kill him because uh, they couldn't handle the truth. Now, which would, the brethren, when they knew it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and they were multiplied. The church is still growing now that Paul is not trying to persecute the, the children of, of Israel anymore. And it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters he came down to the saints where dwelt at Lydia. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, which had been kept in his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Ananias, Jesus Christ make it thee whole. Arise and make, and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt in Lydia and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. See, this is usually what happens when the, the church is growing. The word is preached. Signs and miracles follow. Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, 
which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deed, which she had did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom they, when they had washed, laid her in the upper chamber. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent to him two men, desiring of him that he would not delay to come to them. They heard that Peter was close by, and they knew Peter was performing miracles with the God. Hey, they sent for Peter. Then Peter rose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him out to the upper chamber. And and all the widows stood by him weeping and, sh and showing him the coats and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And when she opened her eyes, when she saw Peter, she sat up. Now, what did he do? He prayed, and then he addressed the body. Now, where was Dorcas' spirit? With the Lord. Peter prayed, hey, to send her back. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So when he talked to the body, hey, and he prayed, the spirit came back to the body. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass, he tarried many days in Joppa, with one Simon a tanner. Now, a tanner, that's a guy who changes animal skins into garments and stuff. You know, they get a, 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 a animal, they skin him, and he takes the skins and makes it usable. Let's get into chapter 10. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Bond, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, and which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evident about a ninth hour of the day, an angel of, of God coming to him, saying to him, Cornelius. And when he looked upon him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are coming up for a memorial before God. And now I send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He, he lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou art to do. Now here's another request that Cornelius gets in a vision from God. And what's he going to do? Hey, he's going to do what God tells him to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that dwelt on him continually. And he had declared all these things unto them, and he sent them to Joppa. I mean, uh, Peter's about to go on a journey. On the morrow, as they went, on their way and drew nigh into the city. Peter went up and into the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. It was about noontime and he, he was taking him a nap and pray. And he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw the heavens open and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knitted at the four corners, and it let it down to earth, wherein all were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, Not so, Lord. 
for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. See, Peter, you know, being an apostle, uh, knowing the food laws, he didn't eat pig or, uh, you know, strange flesh that we're not supposed to be eating. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, call not thou common. And this was done three times, and the vessel was received up into heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision meant, which he had seen, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Now, these were Gentiles that were coming to find Peter. And he had this vision with all these different beasts and creepy things and fowls of the air let down. And, and the voice said, rise, kill and eat. And Peter said, oh, no, I, I don't eat uh, that kind of food and stuff. And But it wasn't about him eating the food. Hey, let's pick it up and see what it really meant. Now, these are the men. They were at the gate calling on Peter. And they called and asked where Simon, where, where the Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Rise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent to him by, from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom thou seekest. What is the cause wherefore you are come? See, Peter said, Why are these guys looking for me? Hey, but God sent them. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and has a good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee to his house and to hear words of thee. See, Peter had the word, and uh, God was sending the word to Cornelius. And they called to them and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanying him. And on the morrow, and after they entered to Caesarea, and Cornelius awaited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Hey, he had a whole lot of people there to hear the word. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up at him saying, Stand up, I am myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, We know that how it is a lawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation but God has shown and that I should not call any man common or unclean that what that vision meant when all these different animals and stuff came down on the sheet and God told Peter to rise kill and eat he didn't mean about killing and eating the animals it was for Peter not to call any man common or unclean. That's why these three Gentiles, when they came to pick him up and he went with them, he figured it out. Therefore, I came unto you without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked, therefore, what I intend you have me sent for me. He wanted to know why, but he figured it out. 
And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. It was at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayers is heard, and thy alms are in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. It is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done, for thou art come. Now therefore we are all here present before God to hear all things which are commanded of thee, of God. Hey, they wanted to hear the word. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he has feared him, and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God has sent unto the children of Israel, preach peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Judea after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He's giving him a little history as a lesson. And we are witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him, and after he rose from the dead. Now, Peter's bringing them up to, up, up to date of all the things that happened while Jesus was with him. And he commanded us to speak unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be judge of the quick and the dead. A. That's serious. To him we give all the prophets witnesses, and through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sin. And that was some of the body of what a Cornelius wanted to hear. And while yet Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word. And they were all of the circumcision which believed and were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on of the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Hey, God is not a respecter of persons. All you have to do is believe. Hey, and I'm out of time. We'll pick this up next week as we continue with Peter as uh, he goes and he's, he's obedient to what God is leading him to do. One day at a time.com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock. <laughs>